What's up, Amazon sellers? Analyzing deals for Amazon arbitrage is tough, and that is why today I've put together this video that's going to help you understand how to analyze deals in the toys and games category. Let's get started. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now for four years. Right now, I'm on a mission to do one million pounds by the end of 2021. If you wanna see more, have a look at my video up there where I document and talk about the entire journey. But enough about me, let's get into the content today. First things first, number one, I'm gonna talk about why it's important to do a deal analysis using Keeper. Number two, I'm gonna talk about the order in which we check our deals when we found them. Number three, I'm going to give you three examples of doing deal analysis using Keeper for toys and games. Number four, I'm going to share with you what you need to know when doing deal analysis for toys and games using Keeper. And then finally, number five, some top tips and tricks that are going to help you out. Let's get started. First things first, why is it important to use Keeper when doing your deal analysis? Well, if you've seen any of my other videos, I bang on about Keeper all the time. Why? Because today is just a snapshot of that product. If you can understand what's happened in the past, i.e. the history of a product, you've got a really good understanding or estimation of what's likely going to happen in the future. By using a tool like Keeper, it's just going to give you that full history of the product over time. Now, what in particular are we looking at when we're looking at that history over time? I'm going to be looking at things such as the buy box price over the history of the product. I'm also going to be looking at the number of sellers and how that's changed on the listing over time, and also the sales rank over time. And if you are even concerned about Amazon competing against Amazon, whether they are going to come onto the product, you can see that as well by looking at the Keeper chart. Again, I've said it past, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you understand what's happened in the past, you can make a really good prediction about what's going to happen in the future. And using Keeper allows you to do that. Okay, so that leads me nicely onto number two. What do we check when we think we found a deal? Let's jump on the computer now and I'll go through an example with you about what I'm looking at. Okay, so I've just loaded up here into a product on Amazon. And what I'm going to do is scroll down to the Keeper chart. So we'll go do that now. So let's have a quick look down. So right here, you can see the Keeper chart. And what I'll do is I'll actually zoom in to make it easier for you guys. So let's get zoomed in. Okay, so here's a screenshot of the graph that I've just taken and I'll go through it now what we actually look at. Okay, so first things first, what I'm probably gonna be looking at is the sales rank. Now this is this green line, which is going up and down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line in my head, pretty much what I'm doing now, just to get a feel for that. Now this green line correlates to this axis on the right hand side. So what I'm trying to do is just get a feel what's happening. Now closer that green line is to the bottom of the graph, i.e. one, is the faster the product is selling, the higher up it is, the slower it's selling. So what I can see is that over the period of this graph, the 90 days, it's trending down, which basically means it's getting faster and faster. So the sales volume of this product is increasing, and right now it's really low down here. It's gonna be really fast selling. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna be looking at is this shaded area, this yellow shaded area here, all across here, and it stopped here, and then obviously it starts again over here. Now, quite simply, what is that telling me? That's telling me that Amazon is on the listing. If I can see that yellow shaded area, or I can tell basically that Amazon are on the listing, and when there's no shaded area around here, it means Amazon are not on the listing, so they're not selling. Now, that is really useful to know if you're looking to compete against Amazon. And so for me, I can see Amazon have been on this listing most of the time, and but for a small part, they're off it. Now, the other thing which I'll just show for you is on here is when you hover back onto the original graph, when you hover over the buy box along the top, and you'll see it along the top of the graph, you've got colors. So you've got yellow, blue, and then kind of yellowly blue, and it mixes up. What is that? It basically tells you who's in control of the buy box. And it's not so much the person, but the fulfillment option. If it's yellow, it's Amazon. If it's red, kind of like a dark orange, it'll be an FBA seller. And if it's blue, it's an FBM seller. So you can use that to understand who's selling at, who owns the buy box, at what time along that journey. Now, the next one I'll look at is the buy box. Now, this is this pink line going across here. And what I'm going to be looking at is what's going on with that price, that buy box price, over time. Now that buy box relates to this axis over here, the price. And what you can see here is previously it started about, let's call it eight pound 50, nine pound. And today it's gone up to probably around about 
12 pound, maybe 13, 14 pound, coming up to 15 pounds. So what we can see is the price is going up over time and the buy box line is just telling us that. Now, the final thing that I'll probably be checking on on an initial glance is quite simply down the bottom, this new sell account. So this line down here, this is, oh, when I can draw properly, this line down here, this is gonna be the number of sellers on that listing who are selling this product listed as new. And this relates to this axis on the right hand side. So what we can see is that previously back here, there's probably what, 20 sellers, and today there's probably about 25. But I'm not seeing any wild variations in that. I can just see that it's pretty much been a slow increase over time. Now, the final thing which I will do is do that same analysis, which is I've just done over the 90 day period, but over the year. So I'm gonna come over down here, click on year, and it's gonna zoom out and show me that graph over the year. And again, I'm just gonna get a feel for that. What's the sellers, sales rank? What's going on with that? I'm also gonna look at Amazon. I'll look at the buy box price and I'll look at that new sell account over that year. Just give me a full picture of what's happened to this product over the last 12 months. Now, the one thing which I will say is I've just gone through what I look at in the Keeper charts and you might be a bit confused about that and that's fine. Understanding Keeper it takes a long, long time and there's a lot of information to take in. But if you want to learn how to understand Keeper to a high level, I've created a three-part mini-series that's going to really help you out. And what I'll do is I'll drop a link up here to the advanced training. That's the one in the middle that's going to help you understand how to do deal analysis and read Keeper charts to a much, much higher standard. Do check that out. It's just going to support you in your Amazon arbitrage business. Okay, so that leads me nicely on to now section three, where I'm going to give you three examples of toys and games keeper charts, and I'll do some deal analysis on them now. So let's have a look now, jump on the computer. Okay, so first things first, I've just loaded up this product here and this graph, and what I'm going to do is just go through the graphs. We can all know how to put in the price and the ROI, or the buy price and the sell price, see the profit and ROI. This is the graph, which gives us that understanding of what's going on in the past, helps us in the future. Now, I'm gonna try and show you what I'm seeing in the graph that's gonna help you out. So, in this graph right here, what can I see? Well, I can see that pink line, that is really stable along the top, but what I can also see is that green line is barely moving. It's going all the way up and it drops down once, and then it will go up again. So quite simply, stable price, but pretty much next to zero sales. It's got one, one drop. So we might count that as one sale, but the idea is it's just not doing anything. So generally not a good product to be buying. Let's have a look at the next one. Now, right here, what can I see in this product here? Well, if you're having a look at the price, and the first thing I'll look at is that price is, you can see that it kind of went $25 up to about $30, and then it went back down to about $20, even down to like 15, maybe a bit lower than that. And I'd probably say that average price is between, over the time, between about 15 and $20. But what can you see recently? It's come up again up to $30. So over the course of the 90 day graph, what I'd probably say for this product right now is that that price, that $30 is a historically high price. We have seen it before, but it's not lasted very long. It has gone back down to $20, maybe even 15. So if you are doing your calculations off that $30 mark, I'd probably say that's a bad idea. I'd probably recommend doing it off maybe the $20 mark, maybe even the 15. That's gonna be the true price of this product. Hey, yes, you might be able to sell it at $30, definitely. That'd be great, great profit. But the problem comes is that historically, it's not really sold to $30 that for that long. It's more likely being $20, even 15. That should be the price that you're using to do that analysis on. Now, the other thing obviously I'd look at is obviously that sales rank. That's pretty much consistent going up and down and the new sell account pretty much consistent. It has peaked up a bit and you can see where it's peaked up higher, you know, probably like to 10 sellers. That price has been at 15 and now it's come back down to five. That's when the price has gone up. So the number of sellers here does correlate inversely to the buy box price. Just be aware of that. So let's have a look at another one. So this product here, now one thing I can see here is that buy box price has been pretty high to start with and it's come down. But if you look at it really carefully, you can see that buy box price is slowly coming down, down, down. It's on a slow decline down the hill. Now, the one thing which I'd also just add to that is if you are looking as well at the new seller count, can you see that down the bottom? That is going from pretty much one or zero at the very beginning up to around the 24th of March, we started getting five and now it's going up up to 20 that is going up so what can we see we can see that as the new seller count is going up i.e more competition 
that buy box price is slowly coming down. And what I'm expecting to see is that over time, that competition gets fiercer and fiercer because people aren't making sales. And what's gonna happen, that buy box price is gonna come down more and more aggressively. So just be mindful of that increases in competition, decreases in the buy box price generally. Now you can also look at the sales rank and being kind of consistent, it's not selling brilliantly, but it is pretty consistent up and down, up and down, not either too low or too high, just consistent. So consistent sales, but buy box prices on the decline. Why? Because the sellers are going up. Three examples there of products. Okay, so question for you guys, do you source deals from the toys and games category at the moment? If you do, just drop a yes down below. I'm interested to see how many people are currently sourcing from the toys and games category. That leads me nicely on to number four. What do you need to know specifically about the toys and games category, which is gonna affect you? So we're gonna go through an example here, which is gonna show you the importance of checking not just the last 90 days, but the whole year. Let's jump on the computer now and look at this. Okay, so I've just loaded up here into a product that you can see here, it's like a Lego Christmas carousel. Now, quite simply, if we scroll down to the Keeper chart, what you've got here is right now it's March. So what I'm going to do is zoom into this period around here. Now, what I might look at is I might say over this period that we're looking at, so like November through to January, if it was January right now and I was looking at the last 90 days, I might look at this product and go, wow, this is an amazing product. Why? The price is pretty stable. It's slowly going up from 100 maybe to 120, 110. Sales rank is going up slowly. But it's not horrendous, it's gone from like 50,000 up to 100,000, but the new seller count is coming down, so less competition, more profit per product because the price is going up, and the sales rank still selling, we can see that. Now you might think, right, you know what, I'm gonna get that in, I'm gonna buy quite a lot of that product, but as you could probably tell, because it's a Christmas product, and if today was January, then it wouldn't sell very well in January, February, March. So this is a really good time when what you wanna do is click down here, you click on the year and then what you can see is you can see that this sales rank, this green sales rank moving up and down. I highlight over here, this green one. Now quite simply you can see, oh, over the course of the year, for some reason, for some reason, it's gone down between November and January and then come back up again. So you can see that there's a seasonal variation between probably November, December, that's where it is, and then it comes back up again. Now, as a result, you're gonna understand that this product sells really, really well during November, December time, Christmas, but not as well outside of that. So if you were looking just at the previous nine, oh, 90 days, November, December, that's gonna tell you it sells really, really well. But when you actually break it out, look at the whole year, you're gonna identify if today was January, is it still gonna continue that sale that we just saw in December? No, it's not, it's gonna sell a lot slower. So looking back at the last January's figures, they're gonna be super, super important. So for you doing that analysis, looking over the course that year, understanding what's happened to that seasonal variation for certain products, it's gonna really make sure that you make good buying decisions, not silly mistakes, which we've all probably done, myself included. And hey, if you wanna see as well, I've just expanded it and out now to the all, and you can really clearly see that variation coming down, up, down, up, down, and up again. And again, with even the new seller count, you can see a massive increase over the December periods. And then also it comes right back down again. Why? Increased competition, increased sales. You can see there's something about this product which makes it seasonal. And it means that you shouldn't just look at the 90 days. You should also be looking at the whole year, the whole picture of getting a feel for this product over a whole 365 days. That leads me quite nicely on to talk about sourcing deals, finding deals, growing deals, doing the analysis. Hey, if you are worried, maybe spending too much time looking for deals, and my God, I know it's a time consuming process, have a look at Fast Track FBA Leads. This is a service we run whereby we've got a team of sourcers sourcing seven days a week, USA and UK, Quite simply, they are doing that deal analysis for you and they are picking the best deals and putting them all on our web platform. You can come in, pick and choose the deals that you want, and then obviously buy them low, sell them high on Amazon for profits. If you want to see more, be sure to have a look down below. Fast Track FBA Leads, you can have a look there and obviously see the service. Okay, so that leads me nicely onto number five, top tips that are going to support you in doing your deal analysis for toys and games using the Keeper Charts. So we showed it before in the previous example, always make sure you go out to the full year, 
Why? Because as you can see, certain products are seasonal. You get that by the Christmas nature of it, or it could be something like if a summer product it comes out, you'll always be checking that year, thinking about seasonal products. Now, in addition to seasonal products, you get products which are, if we say, like commercialized. For example, maybe there's a new film out and that product has done really well because of the film's release, but that isn't going to continue over time. It's going to trend down because that film maybe is finished. It could be something like Star Wars. It could be something like a Lego movie. Just be really aware of that. It does have an impact upon sales of toys. Now, the other one I'll talk about is kind of seasonal. We talked about Christmas already, but just be aware of things like maybe Halloween and maybe like Easter toys. These are seasonal products as well. It isn't just Christmas, which are seasonal. They do happen. So do look at that keeper chart over the whole year, maybe even go out to the whole all time, just to see if you can see a trend of what's going on with that product. Now that leads me quite nicely on to talking about new products. If you find new products come into the Amazon categories or Amazon marketplace, what you're generally going to find is that the initial price they come on at is quite high and then over time it starts to stabilize. For me personally, I try to avoid products which have no sales history over the last 90 days and I want to see a full sales history over those 90 days because quite simply, I know that that initial price a product comes on can be a very high price. And if I were to base my profits and my ROI off that, it's probably gonna be wrong. I need to understand what it's been over a historical selling period of at least 90 days. Remember, if you understand the past, you can predict the future. And if there is no past, how can you tell what's gonna happen in the future? Always be making sure you've got some history that's gonna help you out to understand the products. Now, the next thing I'll say is in those videos, I've talked about it before, always don't just check the price, don't just check Amazon and the sales history, do check the number of sellers, that competition. Top tip for you guys, if you see an increase in the number of sellers, then a decrease, and you see a repetition of that, it can mean that those products become on sale at certain times of year, and if you make a note, you can be ready to buy them as well. That's gonna help you out buying seasonal products, which come on sale at a certain time, knowing when they're likely to come on offer with the suppliers. Now, the final top tip I will share with you is about checking that buy box price, making sure it's a realistic price based on the product. The last thing you wanna be doing is looking at the price today, seeing that it's a price spike and basing your product profit and ROI off a historically high price. It's just not realistically gonna achieve that. And if you're working on smaller margins, smaller ROIs, it probably means you're gonna be taking no profit home or maybe even a loss. So make sure you are checking the history of that buy box price. Is it consistent? Are you being fair in your assessment of what the historical price of that product has been? Okay, what I will say is if you are looking to find more products to sell on Amazon, maybe in the toys and games, have a look around here. I will drop a video about how to find products to sell on Amazon. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That subscribe button just down below. But for me, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.